offensive lineman Jonathan Martin, who was the player at the center of the Dolphins' bullying scandal, posted the following tweet. If you don't know, now you know, with an attachment of his life story, here's a little portion of that statement. Your job leads you to attempt to kill yourself on multiple occasions. Your self-perceived social inadequacy dominates your every waking moment and thought. You're petrified of going to work. You either sleep 12, 14, 16 hours a day when you can or not at all. You drink too much, smoke weed constantly, have trouble focusing on doing your job, playing the sport that you grew up obsessed with. But one day you realize how absurd your current mindset is, that this blank doesn't matter. People don't matter. Money doesn't matter. Fame and notoriety sure as hell don't matter. Nothing matters besides your family, a few close friends, and your own personal happiness. Stephen A., your reactions to this post? <clears throat> well, it's riveting and um, kind of sad because what it speaks to is the fact that he never really had an identity. He grew up completely lost. Uh, you're in school and you don't relate to black folks, you don't relate to white folks. You're constantly questioning who you are, ultimately questioning your own worth. Um, and to imagine that as a child, you're going through that, um, it can definitely lead to those thoughts, thoughts of suicide, etc. cetera. Um, I, I dare venture to say that if you, if you spoke, if you had spoken to um, psychology experts and things of that nature, therapists and what have you, they would trace a lot of problems that people have back to their youth, what they were subjected to, um, which is why it's something that we should always be mindful and careful about, particularly when it comes to kids and the level of cruelty that they could exercise against one another because you just never know. When you see some of these, you know, the Columbine shooting and other things and you hear kids alluding to being bothered in school and being harassed and you know how they felt like they could never catch a break. You just never ever know what that could ultimately lead to, whether somebody elects to harm themselves or whether they elect to harm other people's uh, other people, unfortunately. Having said all of that, I also think it's important to note this. I know you may not agree with this here, Bayless because of your feelings about Richie Incognito in terms of some of his past transgressions, the things that have been reported, the lady at the golf tournament, the team uh, uh, outing when he was with Miami, uh, along with uh, his check and pass in college and at St. Louis. But I must admit to you, this kind of gives me cause to pause as to the level of culpability, culpability that Richie Incognito actually has when it comes to Jonathan Martin. Maybe this is one of the reasons why so many of those players in Miami's locker room felt the need to come to Richie Incognito's defense as opposed to Jonathan Martin, because in their eyes, they may not have had these problematic backgrounds. And because of it, their mindset may have been, what is he talking about? Richie Incognito was the same way with all of us. We didn't interpret it or embrace it as bullying. So when you look at it from that perspective, um, obviously, instead of us engaging in a level of conviction towards Richie Incognito, we should have asked more questions about Jonathan Martin. That's not to say that Jonathan Martin was wrong or that he was at fault. It's to speak to the problems that he had in his life long before Richie Incognito ever came along. And if that truly was the case, and that truly was what was going on in his mind and in his heart, then how could Richie Incognito be held accountable for that? I'm not saying I know the answer. I'm not absolving Richie Incognito. I'm just simply pointing out that it's a very, very legitimate question. Mm. I hear what you're saying about Richie Incognito. I, I have less than zero respect for him as a human. But I get the context within which you're putting him. I, I think he was encouraged by members of the coaching staff, members of the front office, to, to help toughen up Jonathan Martin, to challenge him, not, not to bully him, just, just to push him and prod him and, in a locker room vein, toughen him up. 
And I guess the end game in a football context would have been for Jonathan Martin just to step up one day and deck Richie Incognito. That's what they were hoping, I think, as a, as a staff that would happen. And then he would grow up and become a, a man in a football sense and a better football player. It was never going to happen. I'm here to tell you that obviously I've covered this game, the NFL game, for a long, long time. And trust me on this, I have known several players, l let's say four players, who didn't belong in the sport of football. They got socialized into it because they were born with a talent for football, not a violent talent because they were gentle giants, all four of them. I, I know two of them are still in counseling to this day because they, they, they balked. They balked against it and they, they just kind of got sucked through the vortex of pro football and they did okay at it. They're, they're, they had their moments of goodness, maybe even greatness occasionally. But are you with me? Sometimes a guy like Jonathan Martin, let's, let's take his case. His father, Harvard grad, professor. Mother, Harvard grad, became a corporate lawyer for Toyota. Grew up just outside L.A. in the Westlake area, Westlake Village, and went to Harvard Westlake. <sighs> Starts playing football because he's, he's a big guy with great feet and, and has some athletic ability and, and winds up quickly at tackle because that's the position where you need good feet and, and size athletic ability and all of a sudden he's he's really good as Jonathan Martin and all of a sudden he starts feeling pressure in high school from I don't know about his parents but probably extended family pressure friend pressure classmate pressure peer pressure to to be a football star because that's what everybody wants to be and, and you, you got the goods man you got the talent God was good to you Ugh. Jonathan's saying was he good to me so he winds up at Stanford, and he continues to excel. And after his junior year, he came out early. He went in the draft early, did Jonathan Martin, because he was going to be a high pick. And he went 42nd overall, so he was a high second-round pick. And yet, he, he was a misfit. Like, you, you described him as that fish out of water, neither fish nor fowl. You know, he, he didn't seem to fit anywhere, and he definitely didn't fit in an NFL locker room because it wasn't who he really was. So... Looking back, my regret for Jonathan is that he couldn't step up at any moment in his life and say, I, I don't want this anymore. I want to do that or I want to do that because I'd be a lot happier doing this or that because th this was jarring to his psyche. He didn't fit in football. And so they pushed and poked and prodded because he's a talented guy. And it, it never clicked for him. So he was living hell on earth, in the, especially in the Dolphin locker room because he never belonged there in the first place. And I've known several of those players who, who wish they had never played football. And of course, I argue back to them, well, you did make some money and, and you, you did become kind of a household name, at least in your, your fandom. Yeah, they did, but they all tell me they wish they'd never played pro football. So maybe that's where Jonathan Martin stands right now. Well, maybe so, but I think the key thing that needs to be pointed out here, Skip, is that this is emanating from a bullying scandal. And the question remains, was he truly bullied? And the reason I asked that question is because of what Jonathan Martin revealed. Because you had players inside that locker room that were saying, what bullying? What are you talking about? Everything, I mean, this is what happens in a locker room. We endured and experienced the same thing. What are you talking about? Now, clearly it was real to him. And I don't mean to imply that the bullying scandal was fraudulent in any way, but his interpretation of bullying may be completely and entirely different than what someone else's is. And when Richie Incognito had that interview with Jay Glazer and he pointed out the communication and the text messages and all of this stuff that went on with him and Jonathan, even in the aftermath of what happened I don't know how we ignore that, especially in light of what he's revealed about himself. What he revealed about himself has a lot to do with what he has endured his entire life long before he ever arrived in an NFL uniform. And if that's the case, in, in the interest of fairness, regardless of what kind of despicable allegations have been aimed in the direction of Richie Incognito prior to the bullying scandal, as it specifically pertains to this scandal, 
we must ask ourselves, how much legitimacy does it truly deserve as it pertains to the guilt of Richie Incognito in light of what Jonathan Martin has told us about himself? We have, a, in the interest yeah. of fairness, you have to do that with Richie Incognito because I got to tell you, reading this stuff right here, this seems to me to be a Jonathan Martin issue. It seems to me like Richie Incognito may have very well gotten a raw deal. Mm. I have to admit that. That's well, how this looks, Okay, based on what my, Jonathan Martin has I, described about I, himself. I'll give you this much. I don't think Richie thought he was bullying Jonathan Martin. I think he thought he was toughening Jonathan Martin in a football context. So Well, listen, if, if this is the kind of stuff that's going on in every locker room, and Jonathan Martin ha couldn't handle it because of Jonathan Martin. Like he said, I'm not knocking Jonathan Martin. It's a lot of kids out there that need our help, need to help, need professional help, need a lot of help because they don't know how to handle it because they just don't know because of what they've been subjected to throughout their life. But that's still not Richie Incognito's problem. That's where, that's what resonates with me here. Okay, that's fine, but if you look carefully at his track record, and we don't have time to go back to Richie Incognito's track record, it, it's not impressive. It's yes. not about his track record, yeah. it's about this incident. Okay. But bullying, it, it's certainly hard to define and, and can sure. be blurred, not a black and white issue, but a, a very serious issue. Obviously, we see all the campaigns going on. Suicide's the third leading cause of death amongst young people, a lot of times connected to bullying. Not connecting exactly. that to either of those gentlemen, just taking that issue seriously. We move on to Stephen A's Knicks. They look like they're in for a long season, but are they the team most likely to have the most problems? We'll discuss that after the break.